Aloha. Uh, this is the uh, Labor uh, and uh, Technology Committee convening um, on Wednesday, February 1 at 3 o'clock p.m. We are in conference room 224. I'm Sharon Moriwaki. Uh, chair of the committee with me are Vice Chair Senator Chris Lee and uh, others will be joining us. Before proceeding with the hearing, I'd like to make a few housekeeping announcements. The hearing is being streamed live on YouTube. You can find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. In the unlikely event, we encounter major technical difficulties during the hearing and must end it abruptly. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business on Friday, February 1st at 3 o'clock p.m in conference room 224 and via video conference. There are te te temporary technical glitches during the, the uh, your turn to testify via Zoom, those people on Zoom. We may have to move to the next person due to time constraints. We do have only 90 minutes uh, for this session. We appreciate your understanding, remind you that the committee has your written testimony. I'll be reading a list of individuals who submitted written testimony for each measure we apologize that the closed captioning doesn't accurately transcribe the names. If you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legislature's website. You'll find a link on the status page for the measure. The time slot for this hearing is 90 minutes, as I said, and uh, we would like to accommodate everyone who registered to testify in person and remotely today. So we'll be limiting testimony for two minutes each. Uh, and your testimonies will be posted on the legislature's website. So if you can, we do have a number of testifiers. So if you could limit your, um, your uh, testimony or stand on your testimony and, and um, be available for questions. So we will proceed with, first with Sen Senate Bill 724 relating to the Department of Human Resources Development. This measure appropriates funds and authorizes general obligation bonds for the enhancement of technology resources for the Department of Human Resources Development. Uh, uh, first up is Brenna Hashimoto, the Department of Human Resources Development. No. Oh. Deputy Director, okay, Deputy Director Ryan Yamani, support. Thank you. Um, Chair, Chair Lee, Chair Milwaukee, um, yeah, uh, department is in strong support. Just wanted to briefly highlight that uh, in initial estimates uh, to do the technical upgrades would cost us at least $2.5 million for your consideration. That would include uh, upgrading all the networks to a CAT 6 level and then two IT staff. Uh, just let you know this morning, it took me 22 minutes to boot up my computer. It will be here for any questions. So, is the two point five million included in your, two, your the cost of the two IT specialists? Um, yes, we're looking at uh, in total uh, so requests. In total, including the two yeah. positions. So, you want two positions plus the two point five? Yeah, two no IT specialists. Yeah. No additional amounts. Yeah, right? um, uh, because we would need to rework uh, five okay. floors um, and then make the Ethernet cable network hot. We have a number of. Um, lines that are unusable um and so for example like our router it, yeah but 22 minutes but yeah um so uh, we would like to upgrade that which we, we think then will have a direct impact on our ability to respond to departments and uh, applicants and so you will be doing the recruitment faster that's the intention chair thank you okay. uh next christine sakuda uh, transform hawaii government in support these are all written testimony, and Samuel Mitchell in support. Is there anyone else um, here to testify on this measure? Okay, uh, moving on to SB 725 relating to teleworking, uh, requiring the Department of Human Resources Development to submit an annual report to the legislature on the telework policies of the executive branch and appropriates funds. Brenna Hashimoto or Brenna Hashimoto, Director, Department of Human Resources Development, support. Yes, good afternoon. Chair Moriwaki, Vice Chair Lee. Uh, DHER is in strong support of Senate Bill 725. We um, uh, are supportive of the, the measure to report on telework 
and, um, and would appreciate a position in order to support that function. I think it's important moving forward uh, for the state as an employer and to provide flexibility to our departments. And we appreciate the Senate's concerns about managing telework. And you are asking just for the position or the position and funding? We have not determined whether additional funding is, but we're open to other technological um, solutions. For example, there are um, applications that can help manage telework, and that's something we'd like to explore as well. But we're so just a position at this point. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And, um, you know, I do have a question. One more question. Um, we've had these conversations with Wham on uh, the productivity. Um, and that being measured as well. So um, would you um, say that, that we could add in the, the productivity of telework into the reporting to the legislature? Yes, we could. Obviously telework is a pretty complex um, situation because there are so many different types of work settings and types of work being done through telework. But um, with this position, we would be more readily positioned to, to research best practices and technological solutions that may be out there for the state's consideration that could be then extended to different um, applications. To the metrics for productivity. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, uh, so th these are all written testimonies from Kathy Betts, Department of Human <coughs> Services in support, Christine Sakuda, Transform Hawaii Government in support, Samuel Mitchell in support, and Shana Kukila in support. Anyone else wishing to test? Oh, come, come forward. Scott Glenn. Chair, my apologies for being late. Scott Glenn with the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Um, I believe we had late testimony. I brought hard copies. Um, I'm not sure if it was, uh, if you have it, but I have a copy I can give to each of you and to the committee. Okay, thank you, yeah. We're testifying in support of the measure, and uh, primarily because the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development conducted a survey working with other departments on the effectiveness of telework with state employees. The finding was that most employees find it valuable, and so we would very much uh, like to support DHERD and the state in this effort of exploring teleworking as an option. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so moving on to um, these two next two bills have to do with tip credit and we've got a lot of testimony. So we've got people here and on Zoom. I'd like to um, limit you to two minutes, but if you can stand on your testimony and be available for questions, we can do that as well. But if you're really passionate about what you have to say or you think it's adding to the discussion, please feel free to use your two minutes. So SB 125 relates to tech tip credit uh, beginning in January 1, 2024, increases the tip credit to 20% of the minimum wage. We've received testimony for 128 individuals and organizations. Seven were in support, 121 were in opposition. So um, we're going to go quickly through then um, the testimonies. Uh, Jay Pute, uh, Department of Labor and Industrial Relations. Okay, I might come circle back to you with questions. Um, Jason Bradshaw, uh, Hawaii Iron Workers Stabilization Fund in opposition. Victor Lim in support. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair Mario Kabaki and Vice Chair Lee. Uh, the Hawaii Restaurant Association, representing uh, 3,400 restaurants here in the state of Hawaii, uh, strongly support SB 125. The current post-COVID environment, along with the high inflation and interest rate, have devastated the service industry, especially the restaurants. Restaurants that use tip employees rely upon tip credit to allow them to try and balance the wages because the tip employees, uh, as you know, the uh, menu price increases, inflation, everything uh, automatically uh, will end up being uh, getting paid more while the people in the, the back of the house, the kitchen staff, the support staff are really struggling. And so are the restaurants basically struggling to really uh, come out of the COVID. 
I think contrary to popular belief, uh, just because the state coffers are really, really uh, positive, uh, most of the small businesses and restaurants do not enjoy the same kind of thing. And that's why we really feel that uh, this measure really helps uh, balance uh, the, the back office, uh, the, the back restaurants uh, uh, staff to do that. And uh, it's not like that anybody is taking a, a below minimum wage uh, to do by, by businesses using tip credit. And then my colleagues like, uh, you know, Tom Jones testimony, as well as Ryan Tanaka's testimony, they go into further detail than I do because in my business, I do not use tip employees, but they do. And they really, all, all of the, a lot of the different businesses that I talk to really feel that those that do use it, they really use it for the benefit of the, the other employees in the system. So thank you very much for allowing me to testify in strong support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Trevor Abarzua, Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, sir. I'm going to get it soon. You got it right. <laughs> uh, but we stand on our written testimony in support and echo the comments of our Okay. Thank you. Will Carong, uh, Hawaii Appleseed. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, Will Caron, Communications Director for Hawaii Appleseed Center. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in opposition. Um, the bottom line here is the tip penalty is harmful to workers, um, especially low-wage workers, uh, which the majority of tipped employees are. Um, in particular, these workers are actually, uh, on average, twice as likely to live in poverty as workers that uh, do not work for tips. They're also uh, more likely to be women. 68% uh, of tipped workers are uh, women overall. Um, and therefore the tip credit exacerbates gender inequalities. Uh, a lot of tipped workers are also people of color, so this exacerbates racial inequalities as well. Um, and as far as, uh, especially for women, but for men also um, who work for tips, um, their livelihoods are really dictated by the whims of customers. Uh, and this puts them on an uneven footing in terms of a power balance that actually has been proven to uh, really result in um, excess amounts of sexual harassment in the workplace. So these are vulnerable workers and the tip credit makes the situation worse for them. Um, and then finally, the tip penalty is just really hard to keep track of. I mean, I worked as a tipped worker uh, at, at California Pizza Kitchen right after college. And I know for a fact I was not making $7 over the minimum wage every single shift, but I was getting the tip credit applied uh, every single Every single hour that I worked, I was making $7 an hour instead of $7.25. This is a while ago. But I just, I know that it's really hard to make sure that uh, tipped employees are making $7 over the minimum wage every single shift. It's just really hard to keep track of. And the result is that uh, workers overall are, are illegally underpaid across the United States to the tune of $15 billion a year. So this is just a bad policy. Um, Appleseed strongly recommends that you defer this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sergio Alcavilla. Uh. Good afternoon, um, Senator Marwaki, uh, Senator Lee, and Senator Favela. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Sergio Alcavilla. I'm the Executive Director of the Hawaii Worker Center. Uh, we did submit written testimony. But um, just very simply on, on my end, um, you know, this, let's call it what it is. It's a tip penalty. It's a penalty on workers. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a credit to workers. It's, it's a penalty. But at the end of the day, it takes money away. It takes wages away from workers. I did some quick math. So if, um, you know, forgive me if my math is a little bit hazy, but, um, you know, if this isn't enacted, enacted in, in 2024 with a tip penalty right now being a um, dollar twenty-five. So right now we are asking workers, tip workers, to pay back to their employer two thousand six hundred dollars every single year. That's assuming they work forty hours a week, fifty-two weeks, um, fifty-two weeks a year, right? So we're asking them to give back two thousand six hundred dollars already. Um, if this bill is enacted, that jumps to five thousand eight hundred twenty-four dollars. So that's five thousand eight hundred twenty-four dollars out of tipped workers out of workers' pockets, right? Um, the difference between that is what, $3,224 that we're asking tip workers to give back to their employers. $3,225, right? So, I don't know, I mean, rent for a one-bedroom apartment if you're single, 
right, is about, what, 1500 a month? So that's about two months worth of rent that we're asking tipped employees to give back to their employers just because they are working off of tips. Um, so, of course, the Hawaii Worker Center, we stand with workers. We're going to ask that you strongly oppose this bill. Thank you Thank very you. much, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Seth Hope. Okay, uh, Kia Kapana. Uh, Jun Shin. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Jun Shin, testifying as an individual in strong opposition to this bill. Um, I think the previous testifiers covered a lot of the points I want to cover, so I'm just going to be really quick. Um, I attached the fact sheet from um, the organization One Fair Wage in my testimony, and in it it says that like during the pandemic, six million people were un like six million people who are tip workers were ineligible for unemployment benefits because they were getting too low, like their wages were not enough to qualify for unemployment benefits. And so I think for me that kind of stands out as like a major issue. And I just wanted to really say quickly that um, this isn't an issue that, you know, just affects tip workers, you know, sexual harassment, like discrimination, these kind of things that might happen at the course of a server's, you know, server or other hospitality workers like working day or night but the problem is that um, a big chunk of their livelihood is attached to kind of having to endure that behavior. And so I really don't think that we should expand the tip credit, which is basically a penalty. And so just wanted to quickly say I oppose this testimony. I oppose this bill. Thank you so much for the opportunity to testify. Uh, Michael Boyu on Zoom. Uh, in opposition, uh, AFL CIO. All of these now are in Zoom. In, in opposition, uh, Dane Kaluhiba. In opposition, all of these are in opposition. Uh, Ashkan Kahu, sorry, Kuhal Lua. Uh, in opposition, Burton Chun. In opposition, Kekoa Boon. In opposition, Seth Ilai. In opposition, Charles French. In opposition, Chris Surfer Finau in opposition, Montgomery Meyer in opposition, Ted Scott in opposition, Homai Kalama in opposition, Zorik Alimo'o in opposition, Pita Hiko in opposition, Aaron Miyashiro in opposition, Kaleo Buck in opposition, John Rabanau in opposition. Is there anyone else wishing to testify either here or please come forward? Hi, good afternoon, Chair Murawaki, Vice Chair Lee, and members of the committee. My name is Maria Rala J, and I, along with my co workers who could not be here today um, because they're just busy working and making ends meet, um, strongly oppose the expansion of the tip credit in SB 215. As a restaurant worker, I can attest to the harm that this policy would cause for myself and my coworkers. The tip credit allows employers to pay tip employees a lower minimum wage than non-tip workers with the assumption that the employee will make up the difference through tips. However, this assumption is often not true. Tips are unpredictable and inconsistent, and more often than not, we do not earn enough tips to make up the difference. This results in tip workers being paid a wage that is far below the minimum wage, leaving them and us in a constant state of financial insecurity. We may have busy days where the tips are good, but most of the time it's often slow and a few of our servers often have to go home and not make anything for the day. And because of this instability, the majority of us have to work two jobs just to survive. Furthermore, the expansion of the tip credit would exacerbate the already existing wage gap between the tip and non-tip workers. 
tip workers who are disproportionately women and people of color already face higher rates of poverty and discrimination in the workplace. So in conclusion, the expansion of the tip credit in SB 125 would be a devastating blow to us who are already struggling to make ends meet. And I strongly urge you to reject this harmful policy and instead work towards a fair and livable wage for all workers. Thank you for your time and consideration. Do we have your name and testimony? Oh, yeah, I, I, I submitted late yeah, testimony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Chair, we may be able to ask Peter. Sure. Sure. Yep. Yeah. We are, um, I think we have no one else. Oh, Madam one, Chair? Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait, sorry. You have to wait. Oh, we get the thing too. I think we got Mike on the Zoom too. Yes. Oh, okay. So um, I'm going to take the Mike, I'm going to take the people here. I called you earlier, but I'm going to take the people here and then I'll come back to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, I'm Jolie from United Care Local 5. I just want to say I don't make minimum wage, but, um, and our union doesn't allow for tip credits. But, you know, when I, I, and we stand by our written testimony, but I just wanted to point out that, you know, today, just putting in meter money, eight dollars to park here at the Capitol. You know that's shocking to me, and I don't even make minimum wage. And that, to think that all those people who are minimum wage workers, they cannot even eat at the places that they work for. That's that's horrifying. And every single time I walk out the door from our at our office, or even walking just outside the mall, wherever, anywhere you go in this city, you see poor people. So much poor people, we just cannot, we cannot take anymore as workers, you know? So one of the things that we, um, we, I wanted to point out was, you know, we understand that the small businesses might be struggling, but they shouldn't be taking money out of the workers' pocket. We, we at the union, we have what we call um, success committees, food and beverage success committees, because of course we don't want our companies to go and, you know, bankrupt because of the economy. We don't want that either because if that happens, we don't have a job anyway, right? And so, you know, it, we are motivated to help our employers to, to make money, but not at our own expense. What is, so so what is your collective bargaining agreement? Um, with, so you don't have any tip credit to your, for your employees, for your employers? No, not at all. So it's zero for all your collective um, agreements? Yes. I said I should say generally speaking, you know, because we have so many outlets, different outlets, you know, at the but for, for the most part we don't allow for tip credit. And like I said, we do have, you know, we do have our restaurants, some of them are struggling and we do try and um So you know, how do you yeah. work with the struggling restaurants? The and workers so themselves close. are part of the committee and because they're motivated for our for our restaurants to succeed, they make it a point to come up with some really innovative ideas. So, you know, we don't need to take it out of the pockets of the workers who are already suffering. And even, you know, the, the gentleman said, yes, you know, the inflation and everything. We were all hit by inflation. But for the lowest paid workers, it's just it's just horrifying that they're, they're going to get even harder hit than ever before. So, so you folks don't follow the law on the tip credit that was that's in existence now. Oh no, they can. I mean, the I don't, I don't, I don't know the what that. Um, I don't think we violate the law. Well, it's our employers' don't have labor negotiation. Yeah, we have we our own contract. Well, the sure. contracts, the employers don't. So just like with the airport, okay. I said for my community, as a member, local five, how they would not just is they took two jobs in the same restaurant because they couldn't make ends meet. So she do two positions with the same pay to help out. A restaurant, but they do make accommodations even with local five workers that try to make ends meet. Now she is 90, 90 87 years old, gets the bus every day. She opens and closes on a, on a consider restaurant in the airport. But she's been doing this for years. How she would end up doing them is because they was not be able to have a position, so she would end up taking two or get paid for one. Open and close under you guys. Okay. Then we'll go one, one uh, okay. job should be enough. Is there anything you wanted to add to this? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm Gina Alcos. I've worked at a hotel for 33 years, the fifth largest hotel in Hawaii. 
I'm a tipped employee. I've been a tipped employee for the majority of my life. And I would like to tell you that uh, hourly is a lot more than just about making tips. Everyone thinks if you make tips, you make gravy money. And that's not always the case. I had a child 23 years ago. And while I was out on maternity leave, my maternity leave was based on my hourly wage. At that time, minimum wage was $575. My take home pay for the week was $170. My mortgage was $1,200 a month. How am I gonna pay my mortgage off $170 a month? And that's how all women in Hawaii are paid in the food industry. Our hourly is everything. Is it and so, the correct situation that was, you know, because we are looking at the current situation and yes. now the law has tip credit. So the, this bill is to expand it to 20% right. of, of the minimum wage. So what we're looking at the bill is to increase it to 20%. So do you have any experience in that versus what happened? Well, my point is, is that you're going to reduce the amount of money that a, a woman will receive when she goes out on a maternity leave because it's based on her hourly. So you're not only stealing from the woman, you're stealing from her children. You're taking money away from a child, from a woman. It may be the difference between the federal law allows you to be out for three months when you go on a maternity leave. But how can you afford to stay out for three months if you're only bringing home, you know, a third of what you're no used to making? And the restaurants, they're not going to make up the difference. They, they say they care about their employees, but when they're trying to make money off of taking money away from their employee, they don't care about their employee. You show me one restaurant that stepped up to the plate to pay the difference between the tips and what they normally make when they go out on maternity leave. They, that doesn't exist. They're, they're fine with just paying the straight hourly pay if they have to. The majority of the restaurants don't pay anything for maternity leave. And so I had to come back to work sooner than I wanted to because all I could get was my hourly pay. And so after six weeks, I didn't get any pay at all. Even though the federal government allows you to stay out three months, all I was allowed to get paid was six weeks at straight hourly pay. At that time was five seventy five dollars an hour. Right now you're at $12 an hour, which thank you for increasing our minimum wage, but it's not enough. It wasn't enough to cover food and beverage people. Okay, I'm just saying you're, you're on the right path, but now you're taking two steps backwards. It, it wasn't enough for a food and beverage worker to pay the rent, and now you're trying to take away from that. We just have a dollar for the sixteen dollars, and it increases to like a dollar fifty. I we need more, not less. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So next up, uh, please announce your name, and uh, we'll have a countdown of the time. Two minutes. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chair Moriwaki and uh, Vice Chair Lee, uh, committee members, Tom Jones from uh, Giltaku Japanese Restaurants. Um, well, there's a lot that I'd, I'd like to address from what I just heard in here. Um, the, the comment about the $7.25 an hour wage and, and not making $7 an hour over that, when that law was in place, the $7 um, threshold was not in existence. So, you know, that's why he earned that wage. You would have had to earn at least $7.25 to make up the difference. Um, uh, the, I think the thing that concerns us the most as restaurateurs is the intention of minimum wage law is to make sure that the people at the bottom wages, the lowest earners, are the ones who get pay increases when the minimum wage goes up. I, I think we'd all agree on that, right? We want to help the people at the bottom. And so in our restaurants, and this has been the case since the minimum wage was seven twenty-five. every time the minimum wage goes up, the first people to get a pay increase in our restaurants are the servers, are the tipped employees. And, you know, going all the way back, they were always earning more in tips than, you know, combined in the, you know, the tip credit wage that we would pay. It's called the cash wage, the, the minimum wage less the tip credit. They, you know, that wage that we pay plus their tips puts them at two, three, in some cases, four times more than the people working in the kitchen. So I've got dishwashers that are making $13 an hour back in October. The minimum wage went up they weren't automatically getting a pay increase by law, but all my servers who are earning $40 an hour in combined minimum wage and tips are. And so there's this, you know, uh, you know, unusual phenomenon, you know, where when it goes through and the minimum wage doesn't have a, a commensurate tip credit, the people that get the first pay increase are the ones that are earning the highest amount. In my restaurant and restaurants like ours, there may be small mom and pops or other restaurants where that's different, but by and large, restaurants like mine, Highway Inn, Big City Diner, CPK, places like that, the first people to get the pay increase are the servers, and they're making 
a, a phenomenal amount of money. So address the, 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 the gal that talked about um, her, um, you know, not getting her benefits when she was, you know, um, in maternity leave back in the day, it, it's true, um, cash tips were paid mainly in cash. And so a lot of servers didn't claim their tips as income and they avoided paying taxes on it. And so when they would get their social security checks and I had a, 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 a lady working for me at, at the Columbian back, back many years ago, I asked her, why don't you retire? She goes, I didn't claim enough tips as income. So now my social security is only like $500 a month. And I, I felt so bad for her, but that was a phenomenon. Nowadays, 85% of the cash that comes, the, the, the receipts that come through our restaurants are done on credit cards. We know exactly how much our servers are, are making. They're claiming all of those tips. If they go to apply for unemployment, last two years ago when all our employees went on unemployment because of COVID, they were getting paid their unemployment based on their tip income because they were claiming their tip income. And, and as, as another important thing for people to understand, um, employers have to pay uh, employees, we have to match the, the employee's tip income seven and a half percent. So if employee, you know tipped employees were truly 1099s or the money was you know really theirs, they would have to pay 15 percent you know self-employment tax as I do in my company. But the employee pays seven and a half percent to match on their, their you know their FICA and the employer pays seven and a half percent on the tips as well. So we're contributing to their social security on the tip income that they earn from from the customer. So there's a lot of dynamics here I, I would you know, I just have to say, I, I hear all these you know comments about people not making enough money. If you guys want to make more money, come to work at my restaurant. You're going to be making $30, 40 an hour. I have, you know, single moms. I have, the, you know, they don't have a college education. They can come to our restaurant and get a job and make $70,000 a year working 40 hours a week. And I'll pay their health insurance. And we feed our employees every day. And they get discounts when so they come. How, so. so how extensive is it? Because I think some people are saying that they're, they're not having that from their employer. So is it varied? Uh, and is the law such that it it doesn't require that at least the minimum wage is met, even if it's not in your base that 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 tip right. is shared and not yeah. as as some some of these um, testifiers are yeah. saying? I, I can't. As far as all the restaurants that I know that I'm aware of, you know, and, and a great many of them, I'm on the the board of directors of the restaurant association too. Um, what I'm telling you about my restaurant is generally true for. For most restaurants, there's some that have to check averages lower, the tips will be lower, and some are higher, and they'll be, they'll be higher. Certainly at Roy's, they're higher than at my restaurant. Um, if there if there are people that are not getting their full minimum wage, they're by, there's a law violation. They're all they need is go to the Department of Labor. In order to for the restaurant to um, exercise a tip credit, the employee has to be making seven dollars an hour over the minimum wage, or eight dollars actually in tips. They've been making seven dollars more than the minimum wage in combined wages, so they're making eighteen dollars an hour. And as the minimum wage goes up that's gonna go higher. And I think that's our biggest concern is we're looking at these schedule increases going forward and next year and the year after that and year after that, when the minimum wage goes up, it's gonna all go to the servers right up front and we're gonna be hard pressed to give you know wages, you know, increase in wages in the back. So we're forced to pay the highest wage earners more money at, at the expense of the low wage earners. And we care about all of our employees. So we wanna make sure they all are able to get, get paid well. And if you take tip income into consideration, you know, what other industry, you know, do you know of where a, 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 you know a, a business can start a business, set up shop, you know, train people, and then have customers walk their door and hand cash to their employees at the level that we do. No other industry does that. Um, you know, we provide great jobs, many, many great jobs for a lot of people, you know, to earn really, really good income, and they don't even have to have a college education. I'm, I'm not sure why we're being vilified as, as an industry because we provide great jobs for a lot of people, and if we're forced to start to roboticize and eliminate these positions because the wages get so high, where are those folks gonna to go to get a job where they can earn $30, $40 an hour? I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. I think that these are very valuable, important okay, thank jobs. You. Thank you very much for your comments. Any questions? I have a question. Yes. So <clears throat> if we remove the anomaly of the higher paid uh, service work in, in restaurants, um, mm -hmm. Would you then be okay? So, in other words, what if uh, a tip credit? What if the tip credit was taken away on the condition that any tips were shared with anyone who dealt with food service or cashiers? Well, so in other words, we want to increase. You know, you want to like um, you know increase the um, people supporting the endeavor, the mm -hmm. enterprise, um, but do it in a way that av avoids the. Uh, the situation you talked about, so that basically the, the
the kitchen, people in the kitchen, and other places, they all share it. And then, then actually, as a customer, I'd be willing to tip more because mm. I'm, I'm wanting to share it mm. with more people rather than just, right, it's, it is that dynamic. And right. I, think, I think, you know, that's the sense I have about your dynamic. Well, I, I, will, I will tell you that the, the, the law is silent on tip pools. So we have a tip pool in our restaurants, and most restaurants do so have what tip pools. what if we did? So what, if we had a, a requirement of a tip pool, mm. would you be okay? I, I, my feeling, then yeah. it would eliminate the problem you mentioned. I, I think that the, there's a lot of different restaurants with a lot of different incomes and all that. And I think most restaurants are able to work it out with their staff where it works pretty well. And, and at really high you know, check average locations or lower check average, those percentages of those tip pools um, you know, would be different. So I think trying to put it into law is, is, is difficult. I, right now, my feeling is, is that the $7 threshold is, is pretty good. That makes sure that they're making at least $18 right now. And, and that would grow as time goes by. Um, so if, if the minimum wage, if the, if the 20%, you know, uh, th- you know, uh, tip credit went into place, yes, we'd be paying the employees lower, you know, over time, but they have to be guaranteed to be making more than that in tips above that. So, you know, so you're, so you're- you're on the board of the, you speak president, right? I am. I, I'm, you I'm are the chief I've been the chair. No, I'm a, I'm a okay. past chair. So have you folks ever considered the idea of having um, by um, having the sh- tips be shared by people who um, uh, should be shared with? That's common practice. No, no, so I guess right the answer is no. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I'm I just trying I to think, get the reality. Yeah, here. I think trying to legislate or, to, or make rules around it would okay, probably. So the answer is no, no because we don't think that we should even go there. Is that what you're saying? Well, we're doing it already, and, it, and it's working quite so, well. So I don't. Okay. I'm think trying to translate what what I'm trying to translate your answer to my question. <clears throat> right. Um, I think what Senator well maybe go ahead, go ahead. I think what Senator Hart is saying is if you are splitting it across the board to the backroom people as mm. well as your your servers who are really making the high tips. Mainly the cashiers and what the if, buzzers. What if, yeah. So he's mm. he's saying, okay, what if you pulled all of that, but in law you you did away with tip credit, but you got tips and the tips were shared with everybody. So you wouldn't have to say this person gets it and this mm. person doesn't get it and it's yeah. a seven dollar minimum. What right. what is how how would you implement something? Well, I think it, I think it would be challenging to, to, to put it into some sort of law or what have you. Right now, most restaurants have some level of tip booing, and it, it works with their culture and their environment. Um, I will tell you this. If you try to implement it like that and, and force tip pools and set limits or, or amounts on tip pools, you know, it's interesting. Over all the years that when I've been testifying here, I think this gal was the first server that I ever heard come down and, and testify. Right, servers rarely come down here and talk about tip credit. If you try to put a tip pool in a mandatory, you know, tip pools on, you know, on restaurants, this room will be full of servers, like a hundred of them or more. They will come down. They don't want you to mess with their tips, so they're kind of happy with the way things are, and they don't come down here now because they're making pretty good money for the most part, and they don't want to deal with it. So that's why you don't hear them down here. But you're hearing that all of, all of these people are in opposition to this, of yeah. saying that uh, there it's a tip penalty and not a, a tip credit there where um, people are getting the extra bonus in addition to what we pay as minimum wage. I, I, you know, I would just say that those are just words that they put on there. These are labels. They're, they're you know, politically or philosophically or ideologically motivated. We're not penalizing anybody. We're providing really great job opportunities for employees to earn really good money and, and pay their bills. I've got single moms. I've got people that work for the Department of Transportation. They're teachers. They, they come to work for us. They, they earn extra money. They, li- they like their tips. They like their job. And they use that money to put their kids in school or to pay their mortgage or what have you. And it's flexible work. You know, they can work on weekends. They can, you know, moms can drop off their kids at school at 9 o'clock, show up and work lunch shift, go home at 2, pick up their kids. And sure. they're making, okay. you know, 40, 50 bucks an hour. These are great jobs. I don't know why everybody's that's making that's that up to the boogeyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, hold on, Jerry. Okay. Well, I, I'm not understanding. So you're starting servers get paid forty dollars an hour? No, no, I didn't. No, servers in our restaurant earn the tip credit wage or what they call the cash wage at the federal law. It's called the cash wage. We pay our servers eleven dollars an hour. The current tip, you know, the current minimum wage is twelve. We pay yeah. our servers eleven. The, re- the reason why I'm seeing this, um, you're going with the forty dollars an hour and all these people is making all these tons of money. Mm-hmm. Um, then, then, then why do we get poor people in? No, no, I'm saying because because I'm gonna tell you guys this right now. Trey, listen to what you're saying. Listen to what you're saying. So 
if a server in your restaurant makes twelve dollars an hour when it's minimum and takes home whatever tips they get, that is fair. Because why? They're representing your restaurant. They should get a tip to them, not to you, to them, to represent your restaurant. Mm. But right now we're penalizing them. That's not, that's what it is. They're not getting paid. Do you say they're not getting paid twelve dollars, right? right? They're getting paid what eleven. Right. Right? That's what I'm saying. But what we try to say here, they're gonna try to extend this thing. So why would this just don't do away with we do away with the tip rates? Okay. It sounds to me like the, 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 that these comments are philosophical and not yeah. based on what's really happening. And I'm, there's what there's two well, the forty dollars an hour is philosophical too. Right. Well, that's and that's what our servers are actually making. Oh, we don't know that. Why? Anybody here? Oh no. I, 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 I'd be happy. I'd be happy to share. Yeah. Uh, Senator, I'd be happy to have you, any of you, come to my restaurant. I'll show you our POS things. You can see how much our servers are making. It's it's irrefutable. I, I can bring the W-2 forms down here without their names, with their names crossed up. You can see how much the servers are making. I am not lying. This is what they're making. Thank you. So I understand where uh, I'll move along yeah. quickly, but thank you for your, your commentary. Um, but the way I'm reading this bill, it would allow, it would legally allow a minimum wage employee um, server, for example, to earn 20% less than minimum wage on an off week. Well, you say an off week, I mean, that's a little, we, when we look at our payroll and we, and we look for the $7, we do it on a payroll base, on a pay period basis, and we never come under $7 an hour. I mean, it, you, it, you don't. No, I'm, I'm actually, actually, that's not true. There are occasions where we have an employee who's on vacation and they take some time off and they come in and they work one or two days, and for whatever reason, they didn't make the money, and we pay them the full minimum wage on that day when they work to make sure that they get that money. And, and let me say, so we do do that. This may be the case in your restaurant, but mm -hmm. out there, not every restaurant is equal, and there are some that are better than others. Right. But for those that are not doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. this law would allow them to have employees that would earn 20% less than minimum wage. No, they'd have, in order for them to, I mean, on, I mean, on any given shift? Well, if, if there's, let's say they're not getting tips that week, no, well, I'm not sure what restaurant would well, be let me say it's, tips in a let, week, let, me, let me bring this up. And the reason I bring this up is because I was a server right. here in Hawaii right. and on restaurants in the mainland. Right. I worked in the kitchen as well. In fact, I worked for Mr. Lim as well in the kitchen, right. his restaurant. It, it happens where you have situations where tips for that week, for whatever reason, something's happening in the news or whatever people aren't doing, I don't know. Um, people earn less, which is concerning Less than the minimum wage? Or learning less tips. Well, tips but secondly, I think your assertion, and I think um, Senator Hara brings up a good point that legally, can you do some sort of fix to this that would enshrine in law protections that you voluntarily in your business put in place, tip pools, things like that, um, simply because not all restaurants are going to do that. And there are situations where, for example, I know you said servers would show up in droves mm -hmm. um, upset about potentially having to share their tips. In my experience, in every restaurant I worked in, I worked in you know, over a dozen, mm -hmm. that would never be the case because you're a team. You'd never want to like throw yeah. one of your fellow workers under the bus. Mm -hmm. Everyone would show up here saying, yes, we all want to be paid more. Not we want to take from our friends. And having a law in place that would ensure that employers provide that and do good like you, I mean, would seem to be a good thing. I had a conversation the last time the minimum wage went up with our, with our staff about the tip pool. And, and how much we're tipping and what we're sharing in the tips. And overwhelmingly, they said, we don't need a minimum wage increase. We just want to keep our tip program the way it is. That's exactly what they said to a person, pretty much. They were just like, admittedly, we don't want to be messing with the tip pools. Just And we don't need a minimum wage. I don't know why they're doing that, but that's what they that's what I was told by my staff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to move us yeah. along because there are a couple more thank people. You, thank you. Okay. Anyways, thank uh, you very much. Okay, thank you, because we, we do answer. have hard stop. So are there any other people who have something to add to this conversation uh, in their testimony? Okay, I'm going to call Jay Bote then up um, to... Madam to, Chair, uh, I'm oh, sorry, oh, I, I, yes. was, I was locked out. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, yes. please. Madam Chair, Michael Gloy Jr. on behalf of the Stonewall Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. We are not going to belabor any of the great issues and great points that are made up by the other testifiers in front of us. First, we want to say happy uh, Black History Month. Um, and I bring this up is because tipping is a uh, leftover of slavery. 
So the fact that you're having this discussion and this talk about expanding tip credit, tip penalties, because that's what it is. It's not a credit to the workers. It's a penalty um, on the beginning of that uh, Black History Month is kind of out of step. Um, so we ask that you hold this bill. Um, and if everybody, if all these great employees are out there doing, uh, employers out there doing this great work, if they added that 20% cost to the cost of the food, the item on the uh, item got rid of tipping, like other uh, modern countries in this, uh, in the civilized, civilized age, they've done away with tipping because they know the history of it. They know it doesn't treat the workers fair. Um, but they would still have people coming to their restaurants because tipping ruins the end of the uh, uh, end of the evening. We have a large, and given the fact that tipping doesn't happen in European countries, and we have a lot of European travelers that come here, so they do not tip when they leave a restaurant. Same thing with Asia; they do not tip because it's not part of their culture. So you are actually harming employees. Also, if you happen to be lucky enough to be an, an employee that works at a place that has paid sick leave or paid vacation. And you go to take that vacation and they, uh, they avail themselves of this tip credit, you can't afford to take that be uh, to go call in sick or take vacation. These are real life scenarios that unfortunately need to be addressed. And the only way to address them is by getting rid of the tip penalty and standing up for workers' rights. Mahalo. Thank you. Uh, we have one more person uh, on Zoom. Hi. Hi. Uh, uh, yes, first hi. time testimony. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, Germans. Uh, my name is Neil Tupas and uh, I support the next bill 270 and I oppose the 125 bill, the tip penalty credit. Uh, I work at the bubble tea place uh, part-time in for a few afternoons in the weekend in Waipahu and I want to share my experience. I, I get paid minimum wage uh, thankfully but but I have a lot of friends who who are waiters so we, we talk stories about our jobs and it's uh, from what I hear from them it's hard to be paid by TIFF because it's, it's very unpredictable they they I think that they should get paid minimum wage at the very least it will help them plan financially actually because at least you you know how much you will be receiving every few weeks and you can you can definitely plan around that uh, where I work, I get paid minimum wage, but we are using that uh, those iPad systems where we turn it over to the customers and they sign and, and they can put the tips. And the tips are great; it's always a great uh, addition to to my paycheck when I when I see it. But but I think if if we don't have a law making minimum wage a basis for for all workers and basically eliminate the the tip credit system, eventually in the future. Because because I get tips, it, it might be argued that I am a tip worker, and you know, that that will just be be bad. I, I already don't make a lot of money. It just basically telling me that that I should be receiving less. So I think uh, uh, it should be the full minimum wage for for everyone. Uh, thank you for listening to me. So just to clarify, you saying that that you want the minimum wage and you don't want the tip system tip credits so it's it, because it's so unpredictable is that what you're saying uh tip credit system uh getting less than minimum wage yes is unpredictable and they should get flat out the you know the minimum wage at okay. least okay thank you um jay oh. um so you've heard both sides of the story here and um have you had complaints of of um, from employees not getting minimum wage uh, because of the tip credits, have you have you had anything in your department in terms of this problem? Yeah, I, don't, I don't have the sufficient information to respond to you. So, if you don't mind, Jerry. Do, do you? But what? What? Because you have testimony here, so you have to have seen some experience in terms of the law that just changed as well as well as previously. Have you worked with your division in terms of what this what this policy is on tips and tip credit and uh, uh, having the base be increased in the seven dollars? Can you explain that? If, if you don't mind, Chair, uh, on, on the so you don't you don't know. I don't know if, if how many if okay. how many complaints we've gotten. Uh, so so what about the, this this explanation? Just the explanation. How does tip credit work? Well, let's say. Currently, we have a top dollar minimum wage. Uh, 
So if you, and $1 is the tip credit. So the tip worker would be, you know, $11 would be the minimum wage. So instead of 12, it becomes only $11. But the other part of the law is that there's, it has, they have to make $7 over the minimum wage. That's what I don't understand because they're saying it's a tip, tip penalty, but you have to make $7 more than the minimum wage in order to get the dollar deducted. Is that correct or not? Let me, if you don't mind, Chair, let me ask Cheryl Lee. She's so our administrator. you need to clarify the law because what, what I'm hearing is you have to make $7 over the minimum wage in order for you to get this dollar subtracted from your base of, of um, $12. Let's just say for 2022. An employee must be making at least. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Please. Okay. Please. okay. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, <laughs> Senator Vavella. I'm Cheryl Lee, the administrator for the Wage Standards Division of the Department of Labor. Um, the employee must be making at least $19 an hour in wages and tips to take the full tip, tip credit. So the way we would um, look at it for employers' records is the earnings for the week plus tips for the week divided by the hours work needs to come out to at least $19 an hour for the employer to take the tip credit. So what you're hearing from all of these people in opposition saying that it's a tip penalty, that they're getting $11 an hour, doesn't really work unless the employee makes $19 an hour what? to subtract out the dollar. So in order for them to pay the $11, they need to be making at least $19 an hour in order for the employer to take that dollar tip credit. I see, and how, how do you uh, enforce that? Do you, because we're hearing, oh, it's spotty. Uh, so, do you do a reporting or they have to report to you? So if there's complaints, that's the only way we will find out if um, the employer is taking the tip credit or not. Um, there are not that many complaints, but it's very tedious to keep track of the amount of tips an employee earns per day. And if the employer doesn't keep track, it's automatic they have to pay the minimum wage. So is there some kind of um, reporting that employers have to do to, to wage an hour? So it's only when you get a complaint. Correct. But you do you do spot checks? We or? do. We okay. do spot checks. And um, what is your experience? So I my experience, I did. Uh, in terms of you know spot checking, what, so what has I been the result? come across an employer who was taking a tip credit, but they didn't have the records for it. So that's automatic. Um, they have to pay wage. minimum wage. Correct. So back wages was calculated for each employee because they have to be paid at least the minimum wage. So your, um, or the director's testimony here is that he opposes um, this bill. Um, is it because and, and the way I read your testimony is that you, you're enforcing the current law, which just passed Correct. in 2022, Correct. and that it's, this bill escalates it to 20% of the minimum wage, which you oppose. Correct. So um, have you had any experience with the law just passed in 2022 session? No, not that I know of. So you're, you're, you're saying stay with this current situation until we get more experience? Director, maybe I'll ask the director. You know, when you think of tip, right, it's a, it's a gratuity, uh, you know, a token of appreciation. Uh, you know, I mean, you can live a tip or you don't want to, you know, you don't have to live a tip. But, but because of the law saying you've got to make at least 19, in 2022, at least $19 an hour in order for the employer to take off that $1 off of their minimum wage. It really is a gratuity, but also you're not you're being made whole that you make the minimum wage. Is is that that's how the law reads? So are you saying what are you saying? Well, I mean, you know, when you when you think of, I think layman, uh, you know. No, you're the director of labor. Well, we, 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 the labor is also you know we would put labor. I mean, there's a labor in our the name of the department, the Department of Labor, and so we want to make sure that everybody's protected and they get, uh, you know, the economic equity. Uh, so, because when I think of tip, I'm thinking, you know, it's a token of appreciation. I mean, 
it's uh, some people you know based on the service if it's not good and people don't lift it and you know as you heard from one of the testifiers it's it's, it's unpredictable uncertain it's not a, but it's but a the law the law director is what your administrator is saying is that it, they if unless they make seven dollars over the minimum wage they cannot pay less than minimum wage so it's fair in terms of employer and employee is it not the way the law reads, because you have to have that seven dollars over the minimum wage, so it's a gratuity, yes, sir. Because I like what your service was, but regardless, it, there is a floor that you can't pay in less than minimum wage unless it's seven dollars over the minimum wage. Yes. So, so do you see the fairness in that? I do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Just one last follow up. Now, essentially, tip credit, right, is a way for employers to share in tips coming into a restaurant. Overall, when people are tipping, right, it goes to the servers, goes to the kitchen staff, doesn't matter, but some of that is then given to the employers through the tip credit. But if we just eliminated the tip credit, said everyone's going to get paid minimum wage, it's very simple, straightforward, but uh, the establishment can keep up to a certain percentage of tips, just it's, period. It's up to the employer what they want to do with the tips. Tips are not considered wages. So it's up to the employer what they want to do with the tips. If they want to share it, they can share it. Is there, do you folks enforce the federal, and I hear federal law, federal law, wage no. and hour law? No. So we it's different than the federal law. Yes. Well, I'm not sure what the federal law is, but for state, this is what it is. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. You're Thank you. I think the yeah, federal law, uh, the employer cannot keep any tip. Okay, mm -hmm. that's my, my, my so federal law. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so the employer does not. How would, how would you recruit people if we eliminated tips and you had no problem in, in doing your accounting? <laughs> you just pay straight minimum wage. <laughs> okay, well, any. Well, well, the young, lady, the young lady left her. I don't want to answer a question. Which young lady? I, she, I don't know which one. Which one? She left. Oh, okay. I guess I can talk to Local 5. Okay. Local 5. Oh, anyone? Jolie? Uh, or Jolie? Thank you. Uh, uh, Mrs. Alcos. Just one, just one quick one because I, I know Senator Lee touched on it. And the reason why I bring, the reason why I bring this up is because um, my sister used to work at Top Scanaberries in Waikiki, so <clears throat> you know how long ago was that, but she had found her receipts from the restaurant. Her tax that she had to pay for taxes was $5,000. Now, this was in the 80s now, okay? She served Europeans, foreigners, no tips, but you know, according to her receipts, you gotta pay tax on there you go. Way. So that's what I wasn't hearing about the forty dollar an hour a company. Right, right. But whether the tips is high or low, according to the receipt, right. that's what you're gonna pay. Right. And that's what happened to my sister in Waikiki. So I was gonna ask the young lady what area she works because if they work in Waikiki, tips ain't great. Right, right. You know what I mean? So that that's just one to get it's clear. Eight percent, isn't it? So I believe it's eight, 8 percent. The last time I. Uh, Waitress work, it was 8%. I, I'm in hotel tipping category, so I'm a little different now. Yeah. But um, uh, we, we, if I rang $100 a day, even if I only got $5 tip, I had to pay Pretty taxes 8%. on 8%. Yeah. I was taxed on the $100 I rang up. Even yeah. if I didn't get any tips, I still had to pay taxes on 8% of that. Even though the going rate of tip is 15%, Regardless if I got 15%, I have to pay tax on 8%. Yes, no. okay. Thank you. Okay, Thank so, you. Um, could you come up, Mr. Jones? Thank you. And, and uh, we just need to get this clarified because I don't Yeah, yeah, no, no, no that's, that's clarification. Yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah, th this is kind of important to understand. Uh, the, the IRS will inspect restaurants. There's an 8027 report. They want to know what your restaurant typical sales is. And if the restaurant's typical if the restaurant's reported tip income to its employees is less than 8% of its typical sales, the dining room sales, excluding takeout, then that could trigger an audit. 
okay, of the restaurant, and they will come in and check it. Um, it because of that, restaurants would you know, make sure that employees paid taxes on the 8%. Um, that was withholding taxes. So um, at the end of the year, when they filed their taxes and they did their, you know, did their reports and all that stuff, whatever their actual real taxes would be, would be compared to the reported taxes, and then they would either get money back or, or not. But they didn't have to pay taxes that would never be you know, returned to them, depending on how they filed their taxes at the end of the year. That's but the eight per, yeah, actual. Right, exactly. And the 8% was not a mandatory tax that they paid. It was a threshold that would, inst- you know, that would put an audit in place on their restaurants. The IRS would come in and take a look at the books and check with employees. And there were restaurants that didn't claim tips or they, they had tip pools and different things. And they had to go back and reimburse all those employees, you know, the, 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 you know, the amounts that they took from them. So the, the, the State Department of Labor or the Federal Department of Labor is always a very um, reliable backstop, you know, or, or resource for employees who feel that they've been, you know, cheated by their employer. And there are, you know, there, there's bad actors in every industry and my industry is no different. But, it, it you know, the, the laws that we're talking about applying to everybody shouldn't be based on the few bad actors, I think. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on. We have one more bill, which is similar <laughs> to the last one. So if you have the same thing you're going to say in support of this bill, um, then please come forward. So I'm going to read. Oh, I just lost my computer here. Sorry. Okay, we're going to move on to Senate Bill 270 relating to income. It impl- this one implements a phased elimination of the tip credit. Uh, and we've received testimony from 132 individuals and organizations, 123 in support, nine in opposition. And again, same rules. If you can stand your testimony or you have something to add to our discussion different from the last bill, please come forward. So, uh, Director Batai. Roger, I was going to have just a moment to go. Okay, and um, Jason Bradshaw, Hawaii Iron Workers Stabilization Fund. Yes, Aloha Chair. Aloha. My apologies for being late and not being at the first one, SB 125. I want to just put on record that we do strongly oppose SB 125. We already had your conversation yeah. on that. Yeah. And then um, also wearing the hat of the Democratic Party Labor Caucus, we too um, opposed SB 125. And then for this bill, thank you, Senator Favela, for introducing it. We strongly support the elimination of the tip penalty. And I um, just want to make sure we're on record on the Hawaii Iron Worker Stabilization Fund on behalf of Managing Director T. George Paris and the Democratic Party Labor Caucus that we're in strong support of this bill. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Victor Lim, Hawaii Restaurant Association, in opposition. Well, Chair, I'm going to keep it very short. Since we strongly support uh, 125, as you know, we oppose uh, 270. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Trevor Abarzua, Chamber of Commerce. I'm going to get it soon. (laughs) Thank you. We sent our testimony in opposition. Thank you. Sergio Alcubilla. Or is it Bia? Is it Villa? Villa. Aku Villa. Hawaii Workers Center in support. Thank you again, Senator, and I'll just keep it brief. So, um, you know, seven other states uh, in the nation have done away with the subminimum wage. Um, in those states, they've been able to show that actually uh, wages of tips have increased, wages have increased, and there's more stability for workers. So, this isn't a novel idea to do away um, with the subminimum wage tip penalty. I think it's something that we can do here in Hawaii. If we're one of the more progressive states in the country, I'm grateful for Senator Favela for introducing it. Um, but again, this isn't, um, you know, this isn't about pitting workers from the front with pitting workers in the back. I think that's a conversation that, that does need to be changed. Um, I'm very grateful for the restaurants that I, I patronize and, and I go to, but, um, you know, having a special exemption for tip workers with the minimum wage. The minimum wage is just meant to be a floor, right? But why do we have a spe- specific exemption just for the specific industry? There's a lot of restaurants that I know that pay $12 an hour. They pay the minimum wage plus tips. Um, you know, that extra dollar, I mean, it makes a difference for workers. 
right? Um, you know, I was looking at a pay stub with the waitress the other day, and I'm gl- I'm grateful that her her restaurant pays twelve dollars an hour, and we call them high. Those are high road restaurants because they're trying to do the right thing, um, and it's a better way for for them to. I know, you know, I see help wanted signs all the time when I go to a restaurant, right? I mean, I'm I'm glad they're providing these great jobs. And if it's eighty, sixty thousand dollars a year, that's great. But you know, as a better way to um, to bring in more workers, I mean, just pay twelve dollars an hour plus tips, and let's do away with the subminimum wage, especially here in Hawaii. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thomas Jones. Oh, Will, wait, wait, wait. Will Carone first. Hawaii apple seed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair Will Crone for Hawaii Apple Seed Center. Um, yeah, I, I, I wish that all restaurants operated the way that Mr. Jones operates his restaurant, and that they they made sure that they were following the law to the letter, and that they were their servers were making seven dollars over the minimum wage before the tip credit goes into effect. But again, we just know that that's not happening uni- uniformly. Um, again, fifteen billion dollars a year nationwide in wage theft. In, in workers getting paid illegally low wages. This happens, it happens here in Hawaii, it happens on the continent, it happens all over the place. Not everyone can work at Yutaku. It's just, that's just the reality, right? There's gonna be people that work at other restaurants that aren't gonna be taken care of the same way. And I think that it's important for lawmakers to legislate, not for the, the, the small group of people that are being taken care of, but to legislate for the larger group of people that are falling through the cracks. And so I think it's important that we that we support abolition of the of the tip penalty. So Al- Thank you for introducing. Can you just it. do policy research, or can you do educate um, workers so that in fact they can lodge the complaints at Department of Labor, so that we can address if there really is a problem, how we might address it in law. But right now, they say they have very few complaints. So yeah, well, I mean, we're we we're not. S- no, I do, I do. I, I I think that I think that that you know, if you think about it. Um, it's very intimidating to to try to file a report against your boss uh, if you if you feel like you're being underpaid if you feel like you're not getting your fair share. The, the, their, your job is on the line, right? It's really difficult to go through that process as a worker to stand up for the wages that you deserve. So I'm not surprised at all that DLIR doesn't get that many complaints, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. Sure. Um, on, on top of the note, chair. Um, they're too busy trying to work and make ends meet to put in a complaint knowing that they might not have the job. So try play them the minimum wage money and then try to take away their money to see how fast you'll get complaints at the Department of Labor. So I understand that because the reason why we first did this whole uh, raising the um, minimum wage, none of them came in support of the minimum wage. And you know why? Because they were too busy working at that minimum wage job. That's what I'm talking about. Of course, because we don't have the squeaking, what is that, grease squeaking the wheel? Well, we're the guys that are going to be squeaking, so we can't oil that wheel. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now, um, Thomas Jones, Yotaku Restaurant. Thomas Jones from Hawaii's up in from Yotaku okay. Japanese <laughs> Restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Chair Mori, Mori Waki and Vice Chair Lee. Um, I just want to just you know point out again, we want to make sure that we're giving the money to the lowest wage earners. That's the goal. I want to do that for my staff too. And I don't want to be hindered by, um, you know, higher, you know, mandatory wages to tipped employees. And I'm looking down the road right now we're 12, but then it's going to go 14. Then it's going to go 16. Then it's going to go 18. And that's what I'm looking at going forward saying, how am I going to be able to continue to make those big increases to the highest paid earners and then be able to keep up with my my staff? Because right now, even my dishwashers are earning over $12 an hour. In this market, we're, we're starting dishwashers at 13 or, or more. I've got cooks making 15, 16, 17, $18 an hour. And even in the 20s, I got many you know sushi makers in the 20s. They're not gonna get automatic pay increases and I'm gonna be at a disadvantage to you know give you know um, discretionary pay increases to the back. And that's the battle that I have to deal with and that other restaurants have to deal with. We have only got so much money. And one other important thing, I think it was kind of brought up is that um, the tip income of our servers has increased significantly over the last two years because we've been, particularly the last year, year and a half, once COVID you know, kind of settled down a little bit, we had to start raising our prices to keep up with inflation. So the tip portion of 
our service income has gone up two to three dollars an hour because we're raising our menu prices. And when menu prices go up, mm-hmm. tips go up, and then they make more money. So if we have to give them a, a big a minimum wage, and then we have to compensate with more menu prices, then they get a double pay increase. It's it's really you know it, it's difficult for us to deal with and fathom. And so that's why we're asking for a tip credit, not a tip penalty. We don't want to penalize our employees. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Questions? Okay. Uh, just think, oh, one, one uh, not to dive into everything from before, but um, understanding, you know, also been on the other side of the mm-hmm. house, on the, uh, in small business, were it not the tip credit, is there something, let's say the tip credit went away, mm-hmm. um, what else would be helpful to provide stability for your purposes as a restaurateur? Well, I, think the, I think, you know, managing tip pools. Right now, they're, the, the law is silent on tip pools. Um, there's a little bit of federal law on tip pools. We, we can't pull money into managers cannot get tips, um, supervisors cannot get tips, and owners cannot get tips. Unless the owner was actually serving the customer, they were the you know serving the food, then they could get the tip. If they actually did the service, they could. But otherwise, at the end of the day, the manager can't say, okay, everybody give me 5% or something that's illegal, totally flatly illegal, and, and that, that can't be done. Um, but we'd have to manage the tip pools. And so you would want to increase... You know, if we had to give the servers more money, then basically we would start having tip pools that included more and more people and increasing those portions out there. So their tips would go down even though we're paying them more more wages. That would probably how it would you know be dealt with in most locations, um, depending on how it goes. Or you talk about service charges. We tried to do that some years ago at my restaurant. Our customers totally you know blasted us for that. You can go back and look at our Yelp comments from back then. They were really upset of uh, you know service charges or trying to do away with tips. I don't, customers like to, you know, most customers by and large like tipping and it's part of the culture. I don't know how we could change that. Um, if we eliminated it, it would be a really disruptive, you know, to our society and to our culture. And I'm not sure how that would, you know, pan out financially. We'd still have to raise our prices then and the customers are going to pay one way or the other. So, you know, uh, it, it, that's a real challenge. I, I'm not sure how to deal with that. You, you can see that all over the nation. It's important to understand, too, that about half of the states, or at least 40% of them, still go by the 725, you know, um, minimum wage with a $2.13 cash wage, which means the employer can pay $2.13 an hour as long as the difference is made up in tips. And when I go around the country, I make it a point to ask the servers, what are you getting paid an hour by your employer and what are you making you know um, an hour in tips and by and large the the least amount I hear is 350 an hour in some states and usually they're getting paid five six dollars an hour and their tips are pretty com, com, you know commensurate with what we're making geographically let me stop you there um, yeah and obviously Hawaii is not those states we right have, you know the highest cost of living you know in the universe right but, um, <laughs> if we can follow up uh, maybe later on, yeah. continue the conversation. I'd love yeah. to sort of Absolutely. Chat I'd be happy to share. And I'll, and I'll open my books and show you numbers about what the servers so, are making. So I think we're, we're looking at what is the fair balance. And um, while your, your situation is, is, is uniquely positive, mm-hmm. um, we're looking at our employers not following the law and is there an impact? And if they're not complaining to the Department of Labor, how, you know, how are they addressing that problem? Because what you're hearing is all of these advocates right. saying, you know, it's not. Yeah, I, I, that's a really legitimate, you know, um, concern. And there are bad actors everywhere in all industries. There's a few bad actors. It's human nature. I, I think PSAs and, 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 you know, the Department of Labor could put out information about that on television and this, that kind of thing like that. I'm, I think that would be great, you know, and, and educate the, the population and the workers and let them know what, what's available. It's totally inappropriate for, for an employer to retaliate against an employee. That's totally against the law. And they could lose their business by doing that. If they had a decent lawyer and they retaliated, you know, they could lose their business. So, you know, it's, it's um, you know. It, no, I, I tell you, Chair, I tell you right now, you, you probably... Very rare, very rare, very rare. What you think? You don't. Really? You know, you're very rare. I'll tell you why. Exactly what everybody is telling you right now, coming up. How you take care of you? Not, not. I'll tell you right now. I go to a lot of restaurants. I mean, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to eat. Me and my wife and my daughter, we love to eat. You can ask them. We love to eat. We always tip way more over because of we know what's happening. Right. But I'm saying. Your restaurant and the way you treat your employees are very rare. What me and Senator Lee is saying is the reason why we want to, if we do it with this and we blanket it that way, then there is no room. I know nobody probably gets the Department of Labor, but that's the same thing when it comes to other stuff. Our local people are too busy working, not by the computer complaining. 
but they're too busy worrying about the last bill that they got to pay yeah. that they don't have enough money. Yeah. So I understand that. But the bottom line is, if we continue to go this way, and I'm going to tell you this, it's so funny that when I put in this bill, I, I, I kind of bring them up now because I got you on live, but I, I, I went on Facebook and I went, um, watch one of these old commercials from 1990. And in fact, I think it was uh, one of the commercials from probably, I think it was uh, the affiliation to a uh, local five. And they said, do not listen to the restaurant industry or the CEOs yeah, and, and our chamber of commerce because the minimum wage would do good for the growth of the economy and the people of Hawaii. And I was laughing when I was watching the video because I had this bill here, it wasn't even going to be heard yet. And then I looked at it and then I realized that everything was being raised before the minimum wage. So I'm going to tell you right now. So everybody know I go look Moko pretty much every day. My plate lunch back in the day, the same one I'm eating now, was only 3 to $4. You know how much I pay for that lunch right now before minimum wage? Like 13 14 Huh? Thirteen dollars. The eggs, well, eggs expensive now. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time, eggs wasn't expensive. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I hate to say it, but it, it, I, I mean, I still go there. I, mean, I still eat them. But what I'm saying is, is to the point that even with McDonald's, they did away with their workers way before the minimum wage got passed. Mm -hmm. They got this uh, kiosk thing. Uh, do you want to use your app today? I was like, app, another Applebee's or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't know these things, right. but I'm just saying, I understand how you feel. But if we're going to do our job for the mass people out there, just like one family that came when we were doing the minimum wage share, and I'll wrap this up, came up to me and they was upset, pissed off that I was a Republican, contemplating real rage, oh, rage. So I said, hey, what company do you have? Well, so and so, <coughs> how much employees, bless you, how much employees you have? <coughs> oh, no more, bless you again. Yeah. Then, you. then why are you worried? This minimum wage uh, increase is not going to bother you because you have no employees. But they just came to grumble. You see what I mean? And that's what I'm saying. You know, you know what I mean? It, it's full of people. And I talk to a lot of people because, like I said, I eat a lot of restaurants. One of my favorite restaurants besides Loco Moco in Ever Beach is um, is at um, Outback in in, middle, in uh, Waipio. Great servers. Great waitresses, great everything, waiters, everything, all great. But they're not getting they pay fair share. They, and they promote the company great. They promote the company great. But the pay, the minimum penalties of them not making the twelve dollars that it is an hour is it, hurting them. You know? Yeah, I, so I, I I'm just saying that this is what they tell me when I'm sitting down at Bravo's. I don't even name all the restaurants I eat. But anyway, mm -hmm. the bottom line is I eat at a lot of restaurants and they they voice the concern to me. On the unfairness. Maybe I'll eat at your restaurant and I'll. I'll where are you working at? Where are you Gio Ta. Gio Ta. <laughs> I don't think I can afford this. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm sad to hear that. And I, I'm not, you know, I know the squeaky, you mentioned the squeaky yeah, wheel, yeah, right? Yeah. So that, that, that may be part of it. But from what I know from the restaurant tours that I'm aware of and yes. when I go out and eat in places and I talk to, I, I think by and large, employees are getting paid a fair bit of, you know, the, the, the tip credit wage with the conditions sure. and all that. And there may be some mistakes being made there. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, that, that it's perfect. But um, and there may and there's room for improvement and room yeah. for education. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyways, thank you all for okay. very very thank much you. for listening. Uh, I I know I didn't really get a chance to answer a question, and we could talk afterwards or whatever. Happy yeah. to to, to meet with anybody. You got you know call me anytime. I'm happy to have you come to a restaurant. You. I'll thank show you, you the thank numbers. You. All right, thank you. And Michael, you be patient there. You have something to add to our conversation, please. Oh, I, oh yes, I definitely do. Michael Gouley, Jr., chair of the Stonewall Cox of Democratic Party of Hawaii. I do want to point you, uh, the Democrats in the room, to our platform. And it says right there, we oppose all sub minimum wage policies, including the tip credit. So it is shameful that it took a Republican to introduce this bill. Um, there is a... There's a lot of talk today about fairness. Fairness is a living wage. Even with you take that, add that $7 in there, it's still not a living wage with under the uh, minimum wage. The minimum wage is not a living wage. That's not fair. What's fair is having an employee working 40 hours work and not living in poverty, not having to work three jobs to cover their, uh, cover their put a roof over their head and put a food on their table. That's what's fair. So that is why we are in total support of getting rid of the tip credit. As we stated earlier, it, it, tipping is this tip credit is actually a tip penalty. It is a leftover um, thing from slavery and Jim Crow errors. We should be doing away with that. We need to stand behind our platform. We need to be stand behind the people, working people that 
built the state that provide the, the um, mechanism for everybody to have jobs, as well as there's been talk about, oh, we can fit, you can have people file complaints. Imagine if they didn't have to file complaints because everybody was being paid at least a living wage. They didn't have to file if they were being, being denied their tips, um, as we saw with Roy's out in Koalina. And so that instead of educating workers and putting them in that horrible situation where they have to file a, a complaint against their boss, we get rid of the tip and we make it a we make it a fair wage for all and a living wage for all. Thank you. So you suggested we just eliminate the tip credit, which we I, tip, tips as we um, um, have suggested. Oh, absolutely. Be, and just join the wage. 21st century. But like, you're saying revenue. that. The Department of Labor, U.S. Department of Labor, does not allow that. Is that correct? I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that we, no, no, we as a state should. Law, what? Yes, we as a state, we as a state should uh, not be out there edge and promoting tipping, as it is a it is a horrible practice, and we need to get away from that. So we could eliminate tips as yes, a state. That, and go to a living wage. Wouldn't that be a novel idea? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. get, and that would help get rid of the 10 cities it's, we have. It's, it's unfortunately only one sector of the economy <laughs> that gets tips. No, everybody gets tips. Oh, okay. Maybe we should change this bill then. Eliminate tips. Limiting tips, then you don't have to worry. Then the Department of Labor doesn't have to worry about complaints. They can actually take care of worker safety instead. But all and wouldn't that be a wonderful idea? Take care okay. of all the workers. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right. So, um, Labor Director, you want to come up and answer that question? Shall we eliminate tips? I'm not saying we eliminate, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying we eliminate tips. I'm just saying that we uh, the tip credit. Okay, so what, what, what you heard from Michael Gulu said that we should just eliminate tips and pay higher minimum wage. No, what do you we, say about that? You know, what I say is that I think we should make sure that all employees get their wages. Well, yeah, I know, but he's saying raise the minimum wage, eliminate tips. No, what do you I, say I, to I'm that? Not, I'm not saying you eliminate tips because I think when, when somebody gives you a good service, it's a token of appreciation showing well, but but we're saying what is fair for both employer and employee and um, one of the things um, that if we're not eliminating tips then we should educate the public of uh, because you have very few or one complaint on a minute of, of not paying uh, tip credit accordingly um, that maybe you should educate the public and make it um, easier for people to complain and not be so afraid of losing their job if they complain. You can't because that's against the law. That's retaliation. Right? So I'm going to um, ask the Department of Labor to create an education program in which you do educate employers and employees of the tip credit, the tip credit procedure and, and where you can file when you have complaints. Okay. So that's a way of, of doing, you know, at least a fair, fair um, program that then we can, we can see how your experience is. If you get more complaints, then we'll look at tip credit in the future. Does that make yeah, it fair? Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So hold on. Oh, okay. um, I'm not understanding. So we're on the eliminating of the... Tip credit. Tip credit. I'm not, not saying not, not eliminating tips. No, we're not eliminating the tips. We're eliminating the, the penalties of the, the workers who's getting penalized eleven dollars an hour instead of twelve dollars an hour. Correct. Okay. So if we eliminate that, there is no education. No, there still is tip credit. There's still tip credit. No, but if we eliminate them right now and everybody get paid twelve dollars an hour, services and all. And they collect the tips, and they don't, they don't have to pay any penalties on that. But we have to do a balance. No, but the balance is going back to this one, though. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's, 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 what, that's not what this bill was about. Right. If we're gonna if we're gonna balance it, then then let's go do a pilot program for five years, and um, eliminate the tip credits, and see in the five years you come up with a good program, 
um, to educate the public, and then we can go back to because that's 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 going back to what we are really talking about. The whole reason for this bill was we penalizing. To me, if I if I own a restaurant, I wouldn't want to penalize nobody. I will tell you why, because they're the forefront of our business. They don't want promoting our business. So if they're not happy, then you know it's up to them if they can get the tips. I, I just feel that if you can have him go back, and I, I sorry, I mean, Gene, I'm not taking away anything from you, but I don't think you're gonna be able to come over back to us before the session is over with something ap 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 um, um, applying to this uh, tips penalties. It would be better to just go with a flat $13 or $12 an hour. Okay, we have five minutes, so I'm going to have to uh, move okay. on. Okay, well, if you change have this like that, I can't go for this bill. Okay. I mean, you cannot okay. change them like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, we're going to go into decision making. So we're going to take a recess. in session for decision making. We're reconvening the three o'clock hearing on the Labor and Technology Committee for decision making. Uh, let me know that any bill passing out will include the necessary technical non-substantive amendments. Uh, for SB 724 relating to the Department of Human Resources development, appropriating funds and authorizing general obligation bonds for the enhancement of technology resources for the department uh, the chair's recommendation is to pass with amendment to defect the date and include the DHRD uh, recommendation for its budget and staffing, namely about $2.5 million and uh, two IT specialists. Members discussion? Okay, chair recommends aye. Thank you, voting on this B. 724 recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair and vice chair vote aye. Senator Ihara? Aye. Senator Keith Agaron excused. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair, your measure is adopted. Thank you. Uh, SB 725 relating to teleworking requiring the Department of Human Resources Development to submit an annual report to the legislature on the telework policies of the executive branch and appropriates uh, a position only. Uh, Add language to include the productivity measure by departments on page two, lines three to four, uh, adding in uh, productivity of teleworking by each department and adding on page two an, a separate item on productivity of telework employees. And to defect the date and add the one position. Uh, members, questions, comments? If Proceed. Not Voting on SB 725, recommendations to pass with amendments, noting Senator Keith Agron excused. Are there any reservations or no's? If not, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, SB 125 relating to tip credit beginning January 1, 2024, increasing the tip credit to be 20% of the minimum wage. Uh, almost all our testimony received opposed increasing the tip credit to 20% of the minimum wage. So the Chair's re recommendation is to defer. SB 270 relating to in income implementing a phased elimination of the tip credit. You know, we've got a lot of discussion on this and, and the chair looks to a fair recommendation to ba balance interests of small businesses making expenses to stay in business and employees needing to pay for their needs. The current law was passed last session and it has little experience. In fact, we heard from the Department of Labor that they have had no, no complaints as, as, as yet. So uh, the chair recommends that we gain more experience to give Department of Labor time to assess the changes in the bill last session, in the act last session, uh, and we will go back to the current law. Uh, it also um, amending it to direct the Department of Labor to develop an education program on tip credit and procedures 
on, on filing complaints so that people are really clear that they can complain and the wage and hour division find a way that, that employers know they cannot retaliate against employees and that they should know that IRS also checks on their on their um, payroll to see that that law is followed. So to make clear what the law is and also uh, the complaint procedures. So with that, uh, also um, I will defect the um, effective date. So okay. voting on SB <coughs> two seven zero recommendations to pass with amendments. Noting sure. Just, sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that, and you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what um, the department is expecting because tomorrow he's going to get about 600 million complaints. Yeah. Um, the, the thing is, is, is being, being, I mean, I don't think that's being fair um, because of the department, and you know, and I know how much complaints we get. We, we don't get, we cannot judge um, what is needed for the community to, you know, even what, what um, Mike said. You know, if that's the case, then we got to have everybody that's working in this industry make at least 50000 a year, um, and then we can eliminate all of that. But nobody's making a, um, a fair wage or a living wage or none of that. Um, just to judge it on that, Chair, um, you know, just, just why are you changing it to that way that they're going to have to do a study um, on that? And I, I, I cannot support uh, the bill. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator Vela. The vote, please. Okay, voting on SB uh, 270, recommendation is to pass with amendments. Um, noting Senator Keith Agron excused, Senator Favela, is it no? Yes, no. Uh, are there yes, any other no. reservations? Any other reservations or no? Yes, reservations. reservations for Senator Ihara. I chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. With that, uh, this hearing is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.